So now that Apple's getting close to the final release of the uh, Apple Watch, and since they've released uh, the new version of Xcode onto the App Store, you will now be able to submit your apps with your WatchKit extensions in them. Uh, they've released this WatchKit development tips, optimize your WatchKit app, and it uh, you should read through it. Uh, I can't link it because you can't link outside of YouTube or an affiliated site. Thanks, YouTube. Uh, but there's a lot of useful things in here. And one of the, probably the most important ones is settings bundles. So if you're an iOS developer, you're probably never worried about settings bundles because, well, you've had settings within your app or you just, you think they're old and unimportant. They're slightly more important in WatchKit because the Apple Watch doesn't have a very big screen. So you're really limited with what sort of settings you can include within your own app. And also because Apple Watch apps are managed from the Apple Watch app that is now on iOS 8.2, which was just released. So in this video, I'm going to cover how to create a settings bundle. So how do we do that? So in Xcode, you want to select a file within your main iOS app because that's where your setting bundle lives. It lives within your iOS app. Um, once you've selected in there, you want to go File, New, File. Select WatchKit from the side here and a WatchKit settings bundle. Click OK. Uh, check all these settings are right. They should be right. Make sure it's targeted at your iOS app and click Create. So as you can see, it creates a bundle here with a Lego piece. Didn't know they were allowed to use that. And it creates a number file. Here's your localization file. So translations and stuff. Stuff. I'm not gonna cover that in this video because it's well covered. Yeah. Translations in iOS is a pretty standard thing. So if we open this root file, we can see there's two, at a base level, if I close this, there's two levels. First is this application group container identifier. The second is the preference items. So I'm going to cover this first. This is the name of your group container or your app group container. If you didn't watch my last video about app groups, you should watch it. It's important. It teaches you how to share information between an iOS app and a WatchKit app or any other type of extension. That's also needed for the settings bundle because settings sets settings bundle sets the settings as NS user defaults. And of course, to provide a shared default, it needs to have access to this application group container. So in here, you want to click on there and just put in your the name of your app group. So just put that in there and that will set those things properly. The next thing you need to cover is these preference items. This e these are the items that come up on the settings screen in the WatchKit app. So as you can see, here's an example of the four objects that are available to you in your settings app screen. I think there is more and they are documented on the Apple website and there's plenty of documentation on using settings bundles because they've been around since the App Store started. So the, I'm gonna cover these objects. The first object is a group. So what this does is it contains all the objects below it in sort of a list group. If you've seen on the iOS app, the settings app or if you've used table views, you'll know what a list, a group within a list is. This contains all the objects below it until the next list group as a list group. As you can see, you can change the name. So this can be stuff, that's spelled wrong, but you, you get the idea. The next object is a text field. Self-explanatory, it's a text field. It has text in it. Uh, there's a toggle switch and there is a slider. Um, things to cover in here, of course, the type is a text field. The title is the name of this object that would be used to describe it in the app. And uh, the identifier, the identifier is the name of the uh, NS user default, the shared NS user default that is created and stores the value of this uh, option. So as you can see, each of these have identifiers, pretty self-explanatory uh, values. So that's how you, that's the app group. There's an example I'm going to show you how to access 
one of these preferences. I'm going to leave all these the same. They should be good enough. Just copy the name preference title. So of course, just to access that, I'm going to use the uh, shared information example that I have from my last tutorial. All you need to do is uh, access a shared user default, copy and paste that title in there, and um, you can run your app and you can access that information. So I'll just run that to show you. As you can see, this doesn't have anything in it yet, so I think I just caused an error and crashed it. I did run it again. So we can open our watch Apple Watch app. We can go into our WatchKit tutorial, and we have, here's our text field, so I can type something and click off it. So it saves it in that NS user default. Press this button, and my misspelling of something has been stored in that default is now accessible from Apple Watch. So that's how you can create a settings bundle on Apple Watch.